Hello, and welcome to The Daily Poem. I'm Heidi White, filling in for David Kern. Today, I'm going to read for you a poem called Ice. Ice by Gail Mazur. In the warming house, children lace their skates, bending, choked over their thick jackets. A Franklin stove keeps the place so cozy, it's hard to imagine why anyone would leave, clumping across the frozen beach to the river. December's always the same at Ware's Cove. The first sheer ice, black, then white and deep, until the city sends trucks of men with wooden barriers to put up the boys' hockey rink. An hour of skating after school, of trying wobbly figure eights, an hour of distances moved backwards without falling. Then twilight, the warming house steamy with girls pulling on boots, their chafed legs aching. Outside, the hockey players keep playing, slamming the round black puck until it's dark, until supper. At night, a shy girl comes to the cove with her father. Although there isn't music, they glide arm in arm onto the blurred surface together, braced like dancers. She thinks she'll never be so happy, for who else will find her graceful, find her perfect, skate with her in circles outside the emptied rink forever? Gail Mazur is an American poet. She was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and spent most of her life there. She's the author of several collections of poetry, including Zeppo's First Wife, New and Selected Poems from 2005, which was a finalist for the National Book Award and the collection from which this poem I just read, Ice, comes from. In 1973, Mazur founded the Blacksmith House Poetry Series in Harvard Square. Uh, She is an activist with her late husband, the artist Michael Mazur. And with others, she co-founded the Blacksmith House Poetry Series in which she gathers together poets, national and international, to read poetry together and advocate for the power of poetry in public life. Uh, She has always been an activist and an advocate for causes that she believes in, and she continues to do that today. And she is currently the Distinguished Senior Writer in Residence at Emerson College. Uh, She teaches there in their graduate program. She teaches writing and poetry. And she continues to write wonderful poetry today. And in this poem, Ice, Gail Mazur does hear what she's well known for, which is providing snippets of ordinary life, which illuminate these kinds of universal contemplations that poets like to get to. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things that she does in this poem. There's a lot going on here. The poem is written in couplets. You can't really hear that in reading it aloud because it flows so beautifully throughout the poem, but it's written in unrhymed couplets. And the lines are medium length. They're, you know, between nine and 12 syllables. And so they do have a uniformity to them, but not that kind of sing song uh, rhyme scheme that you might expect with couplets uh, because they're unrhymed and the rhythm is a bit irregular. The meter is a bit irregular, but it does, it is a formal poem that we're looking at here. And the poem opens with this image of ordinary life, communal life in winter. The the river is frozen over and children are going skating. And there's this contrast between warm and cold. The children are in the warming house and she asks the question, why would they leave? Because it's so cozy in there. Uh, Which of course then she doesn't answer the question, but she does describe what the children do when they leave, which is they go skating. And she asks questions, uh, throws out ideas for contemplation throughout the poem, like this one. It's hard to imagine why anyone would leave clumping across the frozen beach to the river. So she throws out these unresolved ideas within the poem and then leaves it to us readers to fill in the blank there without providing a definitive answer. She also emphasizes the particular, these snippets of ordinary life. 
as these children go out to skate, we know that they're doing figure eights and they're hitting a puck and playing hockey. So there's this emphasis on a communal life that's lived out in these particular moments. And the ice, which is the title of the poem, so of course it's going to be important, ice has this idea of support. The fluid waters of the community have hardened. They've solidified in the cold to undergird a communal experience, skating. So all of the kids go out and they skate together and they enjoy this experience of being on the frozen river. And then about three quarters of the way, the poem takes a turn from a larger communal experience to, again, a particular, a an experience of one little girl in this sweet and connected and trusting relationship with her dad. And they go out skating after dark when everybody else is gone and they have a harmonized experience together. They dance and skate, uh, braced like dancers, it says. And she has this wonderful experience of feeling beloved and upheld and supported by her father in this winter community upon the ice. And we have there a sense of solidity and tradition within the poem. It even says that December's always the same at Ware's Cove. But at the same time, the experience, although it repeats over and over again with the cycle of the season, it's also temporary. The ice will melt and the little girl will grow up and she'll attempt to skate, so to speak, uh, with other partners. And so this simple poem about a community skating together and a family skating together uh, becomes much larger than those particulars. It moves into the universal that things change and stay the same. And we readers, we can enter into this very particular litany of descriptive, vivid vignettes about small town community life in the winter and also join in with this more universal contemplation of how along with the seasons, our particular communities, they also change and yet they also stay the same uh, as we live these beautiful and also sometimes terrifying human experiences in our lives. Uh, So here it is one more time, Ice by Gail Mazur. In the warming house, children lace their skates, bending, choked over their thick jackets. A Franklin stove keeps the place so cozy, it's hard to imagine why anyone would leave, clumping across the frozen beach to the river. December's always the same at Ware's Cove, the first sheer ice black then white and deep until the city sends trucks of men with wooden barriers to put up the boys hockey rink an hour of skating after school of trying wobbly figure eights an hour of distances moved backwards without falling then twilight the warming house steamy with girls pulling on boots their chafed legs aching outside The hockey players keep playing, slamming the round black puck until it's dark, until supper. At night, a shy girl comes to the cove with her father. Although there isn't music, they glide arm in arm onto the blurred surface together, braced like dancers. She thinks she'll never be so happy, for who else will find her graceful, find her perfect, Skate with her in circles outside the empty drink forever. This has been The Daily Poem. We'll see you next time with another one.